Hi everyone, this is our design for, open, for an open source ventilator for treating COVID-19. We're a group called Open Vent Bristol, comprising of a, few, a small number of engineers working voluntarily uh, in a, in a non-for-profit basis to create this design of ventilator, uh, with the aim of open sourcing our design so that the, the rest of the world or whoever's interested can sort of benefit from the learnings that we've made along the way. Um, the aims of our project are to create a design which is super simple, uh, as simple as possible, so that it can be uh, designed, manufactured and, and uh, eventually sort of hopefully certified as well within a very short space of time. So keeping the design as simple as possible is absolutely key um, and using parts that are readily available and manufacturing processes that are readily available not only in this country but in uh, pretty much any country in the world because although we're based in the UK, this isn't necessarily designed for uh, that market in mind. Uh, we're, sort of, we're sort of considering um, markets that may not be able to afford the the bigger sophisticated ventilators that cost tens of thousands, but uh, but uh, but it could be potentially used by by uh, by sort of any country that's that's interested. For for example, there's a group in America uh, called Helpful Engineering who are uh, working to develop the design that I posted last time uh, and we're sort of collaborating together which is which is really awesome those guys are great um, and they're aiming towards getting FDA approval for use of the device in in America um, what I what I can do is is I want to talk through the device and how it might be used from the user's perspective so um, we first of all the device is in is in a house box in, in an enclosure uh, and every design decision we've made on this is based around the requirements that the MHRA have posted so all of the moving parts have to be fully enclosed. Um, we've taken the approach of basing the design on a, on a BVM or, or also called an AMBU bag um, and one of those is, is this device here. This is a BVM. So the advantages of basing the device on on the BVM are that it's it's already it's already a medically certified product, um, which is widely used across the world in in a lot of healthcare systems already. It's really cheap, really readily available, and already medically certified. Um, the the bit that it can't do already is it can't automatically ventilate. It's designed as a hand pump ventilator, um, so you sort of squeeze it, um, and traditionally you would put a mask on the end, put that mask on somebody uh, as, a, as a paramedic or, or somebody in the hospital and, and sort of squeeze it as a, as a temporary measure. What we're doing here is we're animating that bag and actuating it using a, an electromechanical mechanism um, but still with that focus of trying to keep it as simple as possible. There's nothing fancy on here, there's no, there's no parts which don't need to be there, it's just cut down to the absolute bare bones. Um, so we've got a motor and then an arm attached to the motor uh, and that arm just moves backwards and forwards um, controlled by some fairly simple software but my, my point is there's, there's, no, um, there's no gears, rack and pinions, there, there's nothing between the motor and the arm it's just, it's just keeping it as, uh, as, as simple as possible. Um, as, as you notice the, the whole thing opens up, um, the, lid, the lid comes back for a couple of reasons. One, so that you can swap out the ambu bag and put a new one in, but also if if you really get desperate and really need to, you can just just open it up and grab it by hand and and squeeze it yourself if if you really need that as a as a sort of manual backup. Um, other other things we have in the design, I guess we've got this uh, we've got a flow rate sensor, which it's not it, it's it, you you can tell obviously it's not a an off the shelf flow rate sensor. It's not something that we bought in, and the, and the reason for that is because um, flow rate sensors for ventilators are quite hard to come by at the moment. They're pretty much out of stock everywhere. So, we're bearing in mind simplicity and designing this to be manufactured in high quantities. Um, I think it was a wise decision not to base our flow rate sensor on an existing off the shelf design, which might not be available in high quantities at the moment. So this is a this is something that we've made and we verified it against an existing off-the-shelf off shelf system and it, and it seems to perform pretty well. Um, I'll go over that in a bit more detail in another post. Um, so as well as the flow rate sensing we've got a pressure sensor both, both of which come go through some tubes into the main chassis um, and that fits onto the ambu bag 
at the moment, as, as this is still a prototype, it fits on just using uh, a plumbing connector. So uh, pretty conveniently, plumbing connectors are uh, compatible with, with hospital connectors. Uh, how amazing is that? Um, so it just it just sort of pops on and off like that, and then you can take the bag out and change it for a new one, or, or do do whatever you want to do. And this just this just kind of pushes back on and, and screws in place. Um, so worth noting that this isn't the final design. So some components, such as the flow rate sensor, will have to change because the material it's made from isn't um, a medically sort of safe material. In fact, it's PVC, which is a material that you shouldn't use in a, in a medical device. But this is this is kind of still in the prototype stage, so we're um, we'll be moving away from that later on. Um, at the at the front of the device, we have the user interface. So that that takes the form of an LCD display, which shows you all of the all of the things you need to show on the screen. And and with these buttons, uh, it gives you control over over the settings that you need control over. Um, running in in pressure control ventilation, which is which is how it's running at the moment. Um, so as well as the, the flow rate sensor, the pressure sensor, our, our third and final sensor, as I said, sort of keeping it as simple as possible, is um, sensing motor current, and that's just for if, if something really goes wrong, and for, say for example you forget to put the bag in, and the arm just sort of comes all the way down, presses against the, the floor, then we can sense that that's happened with motor current. Um, uh, what else? It's, it's, got a, it's got a battery as well, so Again, part of the requirements is that it needs to survive when the mains power is cut, uh, and also show an alarm. So, so we've got a battery there which should last sort of around 20 to 30 minutes, um, and the the machine can still run sort of seamlessly when when the power has been cut. Um, so, I'll show you I'll show you it switched on. So it just it just sort of clamps into place like that, and then for now. We've uh, we've got a nut and bolt that holds it all in, but that will be replaced later on with a with a clamp that will be easier to assemble without needing any uh, any sort of tools. Um, so the whole thing is powered off off 12 volts. So the whole thing is is low voltage, which means we don't have to worry too much about sort of uh, high voltage standards. We just we just have a um, a wall walk power supply that converts from mains into 12 volts. Uh, 12 volts plugs into the side like that um, and it wakes up the display so before switching it on I'll, I'll show you what, what what we're connected to all the way down here so going from the ambu bag the output of that goes through our flow sensor the pressure sensor goes through an antiviral uh, filter all the way through to this which is not a test lung but it's kind of the best thing that we've got at the moment for um, for for testing the system, uh, I think it's I think it's usually used in CPAP devices. There's an overpressure filter which is which is set to sort of maximum of 60 centimeters of water, and there's a, a pressure relief valve, an APL valve. So um, what 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 I've been able to do while while pr doing the programming for this thing is I can change the setting on this, and that that kind of gives a bit of an indication of of of, of the change of, of lung resistance so it allows me to sort of play about with some of the settings in, in the code um, and then all the way over here we have the PEEP valve so uh, just su super quick explanation if you don't know what PEEP is PEEP is the, the lower pressure limit um, which, which means uh, particularly for treating COVID it's, it's quite important because you need the lungs to be always expanded and always pressurised uh, at all times so that means in the inhale breath obviously pressure goes through the system into the lung and then when it goes into the exhale breath this makes sure there's always a high pressure even when you're exhaling it's just that the pressure uh, goes up in the inhale pressure drops down a bit in the exhale but never reaches zero um, and this peep valve is set to uh, 10 centimeters of water but you can get adjustable peep valves like this one um, where you you turn that dial and then you can you can set on there what the what the peep should be like that um, so over to the display again and um, we can if we need to we can press these sort of buttons like that to move the move the motor arm up and down 
if there's a problem with the with the starting position. And then and then down here it says on the screen sort of press the right hand arrow key to, to begin. So you press that and then it and then it starts going and the test line falls off the bench, but that's okay. Um, so what we see on the screen is FR is, is frequency, which is breath frequency per minute. Um, so you can you can sort of choose you can sort of make that go up and down and choose what you want for that. So it's now at 10, so you can hear that the um, the frequency is obviously sort of slowed down now. AP is the actual uh, airway pressure. Um, so it holds at a maximum, so you can see the highest pressure that it's got to. Volume is the volume that it's that it's managed to deliver. Um, SP is something you can set, that's the set pressure. So we're at 35 centimetres of water, which is the default setting. So I can turn that down um, all the way to the minimum that it's got, which is 15 centimetres of water. And you see, as soon as I turn that down, the volume reduces and the actual airway pressure, which is which is the peak, that, that always remembers the highest pressure, um, slightly more than the set pressure, which is okay, because the set pressure sets the plateau pressure. So as soon as the motor presses down, the pressure sort of peaks up and then jumps down a little bit to a plateau level. Um, so the fact that this number is a little bit higher than that one is is actually fine because that's just remembering a peak value rather than rather than telling you the uh, the actual pressure all the time. Otherwise, the numbers would sort of flicker on the screen so quickly you wouldn't see what's going on. Um, also on the screen, we have tidal volume alarms, which is needed for pressure control ventilation mode, which is the mode that it's running at the moment. So over here we have. V max, which is the the maximum volume, um, you can sort of change that, make it whatever you want it to be, and V min, which is the minimum the minimum um, volume tidal volume limit. So if if the actual volume that's produced goes beyond these limits, then it will sound an alarm. Uh, and to demonstrate that, I'll just in I can just in increase the minimum, so you can see that happening. So we've got a volume of about 200 at the moment. So if I increase the the minimum to 220, then you can see the the alarm's going off because the actual volume is less than the alarm uh, the alarm state on the minimum volume. So I'll turn I'll turn that down now because it's a bit a bit annoying. Um, and then the last thing it reads there is a measured value of the I to E ratio. Uh, this is possible to change the code to make this a setting so that you can change it uh, say if you want a one to one ratio or one to three or something but at the moment um, just sort of working off what the requirements have asked us to do this is just set at a uh, at a constant number of one to one to two um, and it's reading that to the screen so you know what it's what it's actually delivering as well um, so what I've been able to do with with testing is kind of test it in a few different lung conditions over here by by simply sort of changing that um, so that means I'm I'm letting some of the pressure escape as as this test lung in, in inflates um, and that sort of emulates the uh, different resistances of different lungs so as I as I change this you'll probably see on the screen that um, that the volume changes. So where we were at a volume of 400 before, we're at a volume of sort of 600 now. So if I if I turn the the restriction up again, then the volume should go back down roughly to where it was, which is about 400 mill milliliters. Um, so what 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 we've been able to do with the sort of limited equipment we've got is try and tune it to work with different settings of this. Um, and then since since that happened, um, we were able to go to the National Physical Laboratory in London to do some testing with this using their test lung, which is uh, you know much more sophisticated than, than the thing I've got on the floor there by, by far. Um, and what that's capable of is is um, recreating all of the lung conditions that we need to test against all of the elements in the MHRA uh, test plan document. Um, so that means that test lung, you can set a compliance and resistance of the lung uh, to try and emulate different compliance and resistances of people suffering with, with the virus, really. 
So, so the compliance means how easily the lung can expand and contract um, and how much it's allowed to expand and contract by. Uh, then the resistance is, is how, difficult, uh, how difficult it is to, uh, to, to inflate. Um, so they change those two settings and then test this ventilator under those settings, setting it to the right, the appropriate pressure level and and um, and frequency, and then and then measure the output of this to see whether the output of this meets with meets with the the requirements from from the MHRA. Um, one, I'm just about to show you a graph from that, but before doing that, I'm just going to show you how to switch it off. So you just press and hold the left hand button. And once you once you hear four beeps, once you hear four beeps, then it switches off and goes back into the off state again. So it's it's quite important that it's a bit more difficult to turn it off than it is to turn it on. So you can hear those sort of four beeps, and that's sort of saying, that's sort of the machine saying, do you really want to do this? Uh, and it gives you a bit of warning before before it actually happens. Um, so on on the screen over here, these are the results from the last testing that we did a couple of days ago. So on on the right on the right hand side, this are, these are the graphs from uh, from the test lung, which were measured from our ventilator, and this shows as it says it says here this is this is the flow rate, um, this is airway pressure, and this is tidal volume. So we're mainly concerned with the uh, the orange line on on the pressure. So that's the that's the line which sort of does this square graph um, square wave shape. Um, the reason we're interested in that one is because that's the one that's described in the requirements document so the the orange line is the one that we're interested in really the the yellow line is is the pressure that's measured within the lungs which which can't really be measured in in reality so that's not mentioned on the requirements document um, so take note of the um, I guess one that we're in pressure control ventilation mode uh, and two that the airway pressure has this sort of square wave shape um, up in the inhale down in the exhale um, and the idea is that it, it doesn't go all the way back down to zero again because we've got a peep valve so the pressure the pressure always stays um, at a certain level depending on what you set it to on the adjustable peep valve uh, on the flow rate we've got this kind of sort of staggered shape and on the tidal volume we've got this kind of shark fin or sawtooth shape whatever you want to call it and then over here on the left hand side I've just taken a screenshot from an existing more sophisticated ventilator which is already in use in hospitals to give some sort of perspective as a, as a benchmark. Um, so comparing the airway pressure we've got the sort of square wave shape uh, similar to our graph over here which is which is uh, the orange line that's that's the comparable line there. On the on the flow rates we've got this kind of up slope down and then and then big dip downwards which is uh, not too dissimilar to what to what we've got over here on the flow rate graph and again on on the volume graph the tidal volume we've got this the kind of sawtooth shark fin shape a bit like we've got over here so you know immediately just just kind of doing that test it gives you gives us confidence that um that it's performing in a similar way to an existing ventilator which is which is pretty pretty great that's amazing actually um what what will come what will come soon to give a bit more detail into this is the test report from MPL, which will come next week, which will tell us how close we are to actually meeting with the requirements. But um, having a good idea of that at the time um, is is possible too by sort of looking at what flow rate it, it manages to get to, uh, sorry, what pressure it manages to get to, and how it's able to maintain that, and whether that's within tolerance or not. And so most of the time during the testing we had earlier in the week, it, it, it's, it sort of indicated that it was, it was performing quite well. Um, so that, that's, that's probably all the detail that I'll go into now, but I'll, I'll release a further video with a bit more detail on how, how the system works uh, for people who want to get a bit more techy. But yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at at the moment. Thanks very much.